Hello, this is video lecture number 64. Uh, today we are talking about cities as crucible of reform. Our subsections today are public health, campaigns against urban prostitution, the movement for social settlements, and cities and national politics. So the industrialization and urbanization of the United States improved the quality of life for millions. Uh, these twin forces also created vast new opportunities. At the same time, numerous problems accompanied the, the country's modernization, such as monopoly, political and business corruption, and social injustice. In response, there was a stunning array of calls at the local, state, and national level uh, of government for adjustment to or reform of these new conditions. Some problems defied solution but many more were tackled with enormous energy and intelligence. Um, Walter Rauschenbusch, uh, who administered a New York City slum neighborhood, preached of a new social gospel. Um, another example would be Margaret Sanger, who spearheaded a birth control movement. And Indiana's pioneering compulsory sterilization law uh, revealed yet another side of progressivism. And finally, we also have an example of the famous Hull House, which was founded by uh, Jane Addams in Chicago. So let's have a closer look then, cities as crucible of reform, with our first section, public health. One of the most urgent problems of the big city was disease. In the late 19th century, researchers in Europe came to understand the role of germs and bacteria. Uh, the public health movement that followed became one of the era's most visible and influential reforms. In cities, also, we had the impact of pollution, uh, and that was more obvious than in rural areas. Children often played on piles of garbage, uh, breathed toxic air, and consumed poisoned food, milk, and water. Infant mortality rates were shocking. Outraged, urban reformers mobilized to demand safer water and better garbage collection. Hygiene reformers taught hand washing and other techniques to fight the spread of tuberculosis. Rising fears of unsafe food and drugs also led to government action. At the end of the Civil War, uh, federal and state governments provided no regulation or oversight of food or medical products. Journalist Upton Sinclair then published his novel, The Jungle, uh, which was an expose of labor exploitation in, Chica in the Chicago meatpacking plants. Uh, what caught the nation's attention were Sinclair's descriptions of rotten meat and filthy packing conditions. Congress then passed the Pure Food and Drug Act and created the Food and Drug Administration in 1906 to oversee compliance with the new law. Okay, let's move on then to the next section, Campaigns Against Urban Prostitution. Distressed by the commercialization of sex in American cities, reformers also launched a nationwide campaign against prostitution. Uh, they warned, in dramatic language, of the perils of white slavery, uh, alleging, in spite of considerable evidence to the contrary, that young white women were being kidnapped and forced into prostitution. Practical investigators, however, found a more complex reality. Uh, women entered prostitution as a result of many factors, including low wage jobs, uh, economic desperation, and often sexual and domestic abuse. A wave of brothel closings crested between 1909 and 1912 as police shut down red light districts in cities nationwide. Meanwhile, Congress packed, passed the Mann Act in 1910 to prohibit the transportation of prostitutes across state lines. Now, the crusade against prostitution accomplished its main goal, which was closing brothels. Uh, but in the long term, it worsened the conditions under which many prostitutes worked. So this brings us to our next section, which is the movement for social settlements. In the most celebrated urban reform institution of the industrial era, and one of the most effective, uh, emerged out of Christian urban missions, uh, educational and social welfare centers that were founded in the 1870s and 1880s. Some reformers were 
focusing on the plight of urban working class women, tackling such problems as uh, low wages and lack of daycare for working mothers. Some groups created cooperative exchanges through which women could support themselves by selling needlework and by selling crafts that they had produced at home. Philanthropic projects led and staffed by women soon evolved into a far more ambitious project, the social settlement. Uh, the most famous of these was Hull House on Chicago's west side, founded in 1889 by Jane Addams. The project was an idea borrowed not only from American missions, but also from uh, Toynbee Hall, which was a London settlement that they had visited while touring Europe. Adams and her colleagues came to believe that immigrants already knew what they needed. What they lacked was the resources to fulfill those needs, as well as a strong political voice. Hull House was typical uh, in offering a bathhouse, playground, kindergarten, and a daycare. By the early 20th century, social settlements like this sprang up all over the United States. They engaged in an array of public activities and they took many forms. Some attached themselves to pre-existing missions or they attached themselves to African-American colleges. Uh, others were founded by energetic graduates of women's colleges. Social settlements used their resources and their influences in many ways. Uh, they opened libraries and gymnasiums for working men and for working women. Uh, they operated employment bureaus, penny savings banks, uh, and cooperative kitchens used by tired families. Settlement work served as a springboard for other projects uh, and was an early crucial proving ground uh, for the emerging profession of social work, uh, which transformed the provision of public welfare. Social workers rejected the older model of private Christian charity, uh, dispensed by well-meaning middle-class people to those in need. All right, this brings us to our last section today, cities and national politics. Despite the work of reformers, the problems of the industrial city grew more rapidly than remedies for them could be found. To overcome the systemic ills of industrialization, which wrought transformations at the national and even global levels, uh, city governments needed new strategies, uh, as well as allies in state and national politics. The political aftermath of the Triangle Fire, for instance, uh, which killed 146 young workers, uh, showed how challenges posed by industrial cities pushed politics in new directions not only by transforming urban government, uh, but also by helping to build broader movements for reform. Now, after the Civil War, Americans and new immigrants had thronged to the great cities from rural areas uh, and from countries around the world. They helped build America into a global industrial power. In the process, they created an electorate and a society that was far more ethnically, racially, and religiously diverse than it had been before. This does conclude our video lecture for today, so go ahead and answer those review questions and continue on with your work.